हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू डेज प्रेजेंटेशन इज ऑन पॉस्टीरियर रिवर्सेबल एनसेफलोपैथी सिंड्रोम और प्रेस सिंड्रोम नाउ प्रेस इज अ क्लिनिको रेडियोलॉजिकल डायग्नोसिस बेस्ड ऑन क्लिनिकल फीचर्स विद सम रिस्क फैक्टर्स एंड सम क्लासिकल एमआर ब्रेन फाइंडिंग्स द सिम्टम्स आर विजन लॉस हेड एक ऑल्टर्ड मेंटल फंक्शन सीजर्स नॉजिया and possible focal deficits now the causes of this are because of any medical treatment any antineoplastic therapy press associated medical conditions like autoimmune or eclampsia age and demographics is it can affect all age but it mostly affects young and middle aged adults the mean age is around 45 female predominance is there even if you are excluding the eclampsia cases prevalence in specific conditions 98% of the patients with eclampsia have these findings 2.7% to 25% with bone marrow transplant 0.6 to 6% with solid organ transplantation 0.4 to 0.8% end stage renal disease or sle now how to make the diagnosis uh, you need a very high index of suspicion with the acute neurological presentation and a consistent mr scan now how acute evaluation should be done early on what information do i need and what should i look for before i make a provisional diagnosis of press the symptom onset there is no specific symptom manifestation time it can vary from hours to days encephalopathy is very common seen in 30 to 90% of the cases ranging from mild confusion to even coma seizures are very common up to 90% patients typically within 24 to 48 hours 3% to 17% may develop even status epilepticus headache is up to 50% usually dull and diffuse thunderclap headaches may indicate reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome visual symptoms occipital region is often affected but only 39% have visual symptoms symptoms include reduced visual acuity diplopia visual field deficits cortical blindness color vision abnormality and visual hallucinations focal neurological deficits in 19% of the patients are seen diagnostic challenges symptoms overlap with other conditions requiring careful differential diagnosis it is essential to review patient's medical history medical charts blood pressure and the level of consciousness blood pressure consideration is important press is often associated with accelerated hypertension 20% to 30% of the patients may be neurotensive or hypotensive during initial evaluation especially if press is medication induced or due to systemic conditions other than hypertension or eclampsia the associated condition and causes frequently associated with hypertension renal failure eclampsia transplant immune suppression sepsis autoimmune disorders and cytotoxic medications rare etiological causes are linezolid ivig intoxication with lsd cocaine and even scorpion poisoning so what baseline test should i perform when i have some kind of suspicion of press so what you need to do first is the imaging the most classical way of diagnosing this is mr scan it is preferred due to the superior resolution especially of the posterior fossa structures a flare sequence best for visualizing subcortical white matter vasogenic edema is done diffusion weighted imaging confirms vasogenic edema with the absence of restriction diffusion contrast seen in 38% to 50% of the patients in leptomeningeal cortical and combined pattern now what patterns can we expect to see in mri parieta occipital 22% hollow hemispheric watershed 23% superior frontal sulcus 27% and central variant that is brain stem including brain stem basal ganglia and cerebellum etc ct scan often the first form of imaging done acutely though less detailed than mri a symmetrical hemispherical vasogenic edema affecting subcortical white matter it is recommended to distinguish press from reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome a cerebral angio can be done mr angio shows arterial wall thickening without enhancement in rcvs lab tests the initial blood panel full blood count renal function electrolytes liver function test ammonia levels urine toxin screen hypertension related tests 
for significantly unexplained hypertension test for secondary causes like pheochromocytoma con syndrome cushing syndrome all these should be done you can also test for autoimmune diseases if it is clinically indicated serum vasculitis markers extra nuclear uh, nuclear antigen rheumatoid factor complement levels lupus anticoagulant anti cardiolipin antibody para proteins ace levels hiv serology esr c reactive protein and finally you can go for csf examination also usually not necessary unless you have atypical mri findings and avoid lumbar puncture if you have signs of raised uh, intracranial pressure now this is a classical mri we will see how it looks like so in this mri from a to c what you see is a t2 flare imaging in this a you find prominent cortical and subcortical white matter signal hyperintensity involving both of the occipital lobes in b you find similar hypertensity uh, intensity in the left anterior parietal lobe left frontal lobe and the splenium of the corpus callosum and in c you find patchy hyper intensity of the t2 flare within the right cerebellar hemisphere so if you go back to the d and e it is a diffusion weighted imaging and apparent diffusion coefficient that is adc in the d you find dwi hyper intensity involving cortical bilaterally indicating a vasogenic edema and in e you find a corresponding hyperintensity in the adc confirming the vasogenic edema you can see the edema over here and in f you find a susceptibility weighted imaging the swi where you find a small focus of blooming within the left occipital indicating a petechial hemorrhage here you can see the blooming so this is what is a classical mr finding of press but you can also have atypical findings so what are the atypical findings in this in the ab what you see is a axial flare sequence in a you find hyper intense signal change in the brain stem cerebellar region bilateral thalami corpus callosum and bilateral anterior temporal lobes and in b you find extensive brain stem involvement showing significant hyper intensity changes in the c you find a sagittal flare you find extensive hyperdensities in the brain stem corpus callosum highlighting significant involvement in these areas in the d you find a coronal section where you find confluent hyperdensities in the brain stem bilateral temporal and left parietal indicating widespread edema in e and f you find diffusion weight weighted imaging and adc in the diffusion weighted you find involvement of the midbrain bilateral cerebellar hemisphere and in the f you find a corresponding hyperintensity in the adc consistent with the vasogenic edema so these are the atypical findings if you find the atypical findings you can go for a lumbar puncture now do i need to do further imaging well you can go for further imaging that is the digital subtraction angiography when you find no untypical finding so consider dsa in patients with possible reversible cerebral vasoconstrictor syndrome that is rcvs finding in ct and mri suggesting intracranial arteriopathy and the purpose is to identify rcvs or cerebral vasculitis to guide specific therapies now differential diagnosis of press is important you need to consider viral and autoimmune encephalitis demyelinating disease toxic leukoencephalopathy malignancy cns vasculitis central or pontine myelinolysis acute stroke stroke like migraine attacks after radiation therapy key steps for differentiation are the thorough review of the patient's risk factors which we have already discussed the additional targeted testing that we need to do follow up imaging is necessary now once we have made a diagnosis of press how do we acutely manage this condition the general approach is to support that is remove the reversible causes correct the hypertension discontinue or uh, give some other medications which can be changed in uh, chemotherapy or immune suppressive therapy hydrate the patient correct electrolyte imbalances
In the hypertension management, gradually reduce the blood pressure to prevent further cerebral edema. Recommend antihypertensives as shown in a table which I will show in the end. And intensive care management, transfer to the intensive care unit if you find encephalopathy, seizures, ventilatory depression, need for invasive blood pressure management. Up to 70% of the patients require intensive care because primarily because of seizure and encephalopathy. 35 to 40% require ventilation, which may be up to three to seven days. Now, specific situation need to be managed like intraparenchymal or subarachnoid hemorrhage, a gradual blood pressure reduction needs to be done. Marked renal failure, go for dialysis. For pregnant women, consider early delivery, avoid ACE. Status epilepticus, emergency management with benzodiazepines, loading dose of valproate, levetiracetam or phenytoin. No standard guidelines how to manage press associated seizures to be managed as any other seizure. Long term epilepsy develops in only 1 to 4% of the patients and most patients do not require long term anti seizure management. Consider weaning of anti seizure medication once the acute phase resolves. Now what to do in malignant press? In malignant press the definition is characterized by GCS less than 8 clinical decline despite standard medical treatment because of the elevated ICP, radiological evidence of edema, intracerebral hemorrhage causing mass effect. Now in those cases you need aggressive supportive management where you need to intubate and ventilate the patient, blood transfusion to reverse the coagulopathy, corticosteroids for autoimmune disorders, intracranial pressure monitoring. You can do this for patients with GCS less than 8. Now interventions for the raised ICP, osmotherapy, CSF drainage, craniectomy, hematoma evacuation, external ventricular drain, all these things can be done. Now once you have got through the acute phase, how do you manage the long term? In the long term, the chance of recurrent press is there which can occur in 4% of the cases, more common in patients with persistent risk factors like sickle cell crisis, autoimmune conditions, hypertensive crisis, renal failure, mitochondrial disorders. So prognosis in these cases is it is described as benign and wholly reversible, but mortality is around 20%. 44% of the patients are left with varying degrees of functional impairments. Follow up imaging may show residual structural lesion in 40% of the cases. So the factors associated with poor outcome are severe encephalopathy, hypertensive cause, hyperglycemia, neoplastic cause, longer time to control of the causative factor, presence of multiple comorbidities, elevated CRP, low CSF glucose, coagulopathy, and in imaging findings like corpus callosum involvement, extensive cerebral edema with worsening imaging severity, intracerebral hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, restriction diffusion on imaging, all these things are associated with worse outcomes. So predictors of outcome. The degree of hypertension correlates with the clinical outcome and the severity of the edema. Gadolinium based contrast enhanced patterns do not correlate with functional outcomes. Seizures uh, high frequency during acute phase but not associated with increased length of hospital stay, morbidity, mortality or nursing home requirement. Low risk of long term unprovoked seizure, epilepsy is rare. What do I need to know about the pathophysiology? Why is this condition occurring? What I need to know so that I can manage it better? The first is the general mechanism. Press is, involves dysregulated perfusion of the brain leading to a reversible vasogenic edema. The exact mechanism is poorly understood with multiple contributing factors. Theories for cerebral vasculature dysregulation are excessive hypertension, impaired cerebral autoregulation, cause of cerebral hyperperfusion, endothelial dysfunction which may occur directly or as a result of cytokine secretion, Posterior circulation vulnerability is less sympathetic innervation in the posterior circulation making it more susceptible to hyperperfusion and reflex parasympathetic vasodilatation. Acute blood pressure fluctuations common in patients with press but it is unclear if it is a cause or it is the effect of press. So to conclude the presentation is what we have already told that is encephalopathy, seizures and visual disturbances. The cause it is hypertension preeclampsia, renal failure, immune suppression, and the diagnosis is primarily MR scan, which shows a posterior subcortical cerebral edema. And treatment, address the correctable causes and the triggers, provide supportive care, prognosis, 
generally favorable but severe cases need to be managed in the icu with proper neurological monitoring and treatment research needs are better understanding of the pathophysiology understanding data on the long term seizures with anti seizure medications and finally the table where we show you all the drugs that you can use to control the blood pressure thank you for your patience